on the campus of Dartmouth College, moments away from kickoff. Quick look at the starters here. Starting with the visitors, it's Carlos Diaz Neto in goal for the Skyhawks. Jared Raposa, Chris Sederchrist, Jacob Wozniki, Sean Ryan, Colin Milliken, Zach Davis, Tiago Lima Bittencourt, Benjamin Maza Bergeron, Terrence O'Neill, Colin Hargraves make up the start in 11 for Stonehill on the opposite side for the big green. It will be Costi Cristodulo in goal. Alexi Uno will be the first field player at number two. And then looking at the rest of the field, it will be Vasilis Miras, Douglas Arvahar, Christian Fed, Andrew Ellis, Trenton Blake, Oscar Magnuson, Sebastian Mannion, Cameron Brain, Sam Fenton, and that will be the start in 11 for the Big Green. The Big Green wearing their white jerseys with that those green lines sent across and the green numbers on the back. Stonehill, their purple jerseys with the white lettering and numbers. And it looks like Stonehill will get the first touch. Keeping an eye on the wind here. It's been a windy day. It seems to have died down a little bit, which was projected in the forecast today with most of the heavy winds coming this morning. It is blowing back towards Stonehill side of the field, and we'll see if that plays an impact in this one. First touch there off the initial kickoff. Magnuson nearly took it away for the big green, and now Magnuson will get it back. Oscar Magnuson trying to play it forward and back coming to play. It will be Stonehill and Jacob Rosnicki as the Skyhawks look to reverse field now. Maza Bergeron sends this one back in for the first touch of the game for Diaz Neto, the senior goalkeeper from Brazil. This one will get deflected high up in the air this time, and it'll settle down for the big green. First touch that time was by Vasilas Miras, but luckily Stonehill able to survive that one, nearly took a very dangerous hop for the Skyhawks, but they're able to survive, and now they maintain possession here early. Like I said before last season, their largest deficit of defeat with six goals came against Dartmouth, but like I said before, looking to improve a couple key freshmen on this roster. Here's Raznicki trying to work this one across to the other side of the field. That'll be headed away by Andrew Ellis. Dartmouth trying to work it upfield. They're applying the pressure with Christian Fed, the junior midfielder from Norway. A lot of different countries represented on this Dartmouth roster have players from the US as there's a, there's a pressure there by Sam Fenton. This one will get played over the top. Stonehill will look to send it back the other way. Players from the US, England, Norway, South Africa, Iceland, Costa Rica, the Dominican Republic, Canada, and Greece. So a number of different players represented as here's Stonehill looking for the early opportunity. Raposa trying to work his way through a couple white jerseys but cleared away that time by Andrew Ellis. Controlled there by Avahar, trying to make something happen. The six foot four Norwegian has been huge this season for the Big Green and has really been playing his best soccer of the season the past couple games as this one will be touched down there by Magnuson. And once again, Stonehill able to take it away and they will look to work this one to the near side of the field. Maza Bergeron trying to play this one forward to target Lima Bittencourt. Bittencourt plays this one by Fenton, but terrific work there from Alexi Uno to take that away. The French defender comes all the way up the field as now wrapping back around is Vasilis Miras. Forward now to Magnuson. And now all the way back to Ellis. Ellis will send this one high down the field, targeting Miras once again. Miras fires a shot that will be saved there by Diaz Neto. So first shot of the game goes to the big green, but the save made there by the experienced senior keeper. Taking a look at his career so far, 10 games started. This will be his 11th today. In those 10 games, a record of three wins, five losses, two draws. Allows about slightly over two goals a game, but has an over 70% save percentage. Two shutouts on his career. Started the last two games of the season, making this his third consecutive start for the Skyhawks as they look to work it back down the other way. Colin Hargraves sends this one across. Sidar Christ back to Hargraves. Dartmouth able to get the takeaway there. Good pressure from Ellis as that one might have hit the official. It actually was deflected as, nope, there's the whistle as it did indeed hit the official on the field. So that will be a drop ball. Dartmouth will control. Happens occasionally. It just gets dropped down and play will resume quickly here. 
So this one will be tapped forward here. Christo Dulo will play this one outside of his own 18. No pressure. So Christo Dulo is going to take as much open field as he wants. He'll send this one finally down the field, aided a bit by the wind. That one is going to carry all the way into the 18. Magnuson trying to keep this one in play. Able to touch that one off of a Stonehill player, but I believe Ma it came back and hit Magnuson again. So that will be a goal kick here for the Skyhawks. But you can start to see the impact of the wind there. That one from Christo Dulo carried almost all the way from outside the 18 to the opposing 18. And this is going to be an interesting opportunity here to see Diaz Neto. He'll get the goal kick here with the wind blowing straight against him. This one is going to get stopped. That near midfield, good play for there by Wasnicki, but it's going to come right back the other way as Dartmouth will control. It was Hurricane Lee now downgraded to a tropical storm. Most of the heavy winds were this morning, but we still have some remnants of that wind right now. For Dartmouth, could be key to be productive here in this first half while they have it, the advantage of the wind. We'll see how that factors in as we continue. We get a whistle here. It'll be a free kick for the Big Green. This is a Stonehill team. They haven't picked up a lot of yellow cards so far this season, only four on the year. In fact, there's barely been any in their games, only eight total, four by them, four by opponents. To cross-reference that, Dartmouth has played one less game, but they have nine yellow cards on the season, and they've drawn 11 for a total of 20. So over 12 more yellow cards in one less game for Dartmouth so far this season combined. So maybe just a more physical style. This one's sent in. Played forward and scooped up that time by Diaz Neto. That one found the head there of Andrew Ellis, who was able to direct it somewhat towards net. But once again, Diaz Neto in the right spot to make the play. So for the Skyhawks, their last game of 4 to nothing loss against Bryant. Going to look to respond here today as this one played across and now outside the 18, trying to weave his way through and find an avenue to shoot. That one's going to sail just high for Trenton Blake. The freshman forward from Tallahassee, Florida, nearly had the opening goal in this one. Would have been his first of the season, but sailed it just a touch high. Blake played for Tampa Bay United, won a United Soccer League Academy national tournament. Started in all four games this season. Has played about 60 minutes of contest. Has the first quality look there as the other shot didn't trouble Diaz Neto, but that one could have been dangerous if he had been able to locate it a little better. So this one will once again get played towards midfield. Off a couple heads and now controlled by the Skyhawks. Trying to play that one for Tarasnicki. Taking some contact going down. There's no whistle, so play was zoomed. This one trying to be played across there to Magnuson, instead taken away that time by Stonehill and Sean Ryan. Coming back into the play is Trenton Blake, and Blake will look to reverse field quickly. Has Fenton making a run. Instead, it'll go to Miras, and Miras trying to play that one forward. Magnuson kind of pointing where he, to where he would have wanted it. Still working on the connections. You know, Miras, the freshman from Athens, Greece, Made a couple appearances for the Greek national team in some U15 and U19 contests. Was trying to find Oscar Magnuson, the sophomore midfielder from Iceland. And you can kind of see, too, players from all over the world coming together to play on this squad and still trying to work on those connections. A lot of new faces for a Dartmouth team that runs on the younger side. Only five seniors slash fifth-year players on the roster. They have nine juniors, seven sophomores, and six freshmen. So... Going to take a little bit of time for the team to get used to each other. We've been seeing it in the last couple games, them really starting to work together. And we'll see if that continues today, as that one will get played out off the boot of Alexi Uno, and that will go out for a throw here for Maza Bergeron. Bergeron will take his time here, trying to figure out where he wants to target this Dartmouth defense. He'll try and play this one over the top. It'll be played there away off the head of Uno. So once again, Mauza Bergeron will throw this one and he's sending his teammates inside the 18. He's gonna give this one a big toss, try to work this one all the way in as this one will be sent in inside the 18. 
played high up in the air, away from goal, and now cleared by Magnuson. This one played back in that time by Finbar O'Connor, I believe. No, that's 31. That's Colin Hargraves who came sprinting into the play to play that one back in towards net. And we're going to get a free kick here for Stonehill. Have to imagine this is too far to think about targeting goal directly, but certainly close enough to get yourself a good opportunity with a well-placed cross. It's Colin Milliken, the SNHU transfer. Was terrific there for the Penman. He'll play this one in for the Skyhawks as this one played away there. Off the head that time of Miras, and this one will get sent all the way out of play for another Stonehill throw. It will be Sertacris to do the honors. Or no, he'll drop this one off to Maza Bergeron, who will get this one back into play for Stonehill. We'll look to work this one across the field in reverse field quickly. Here's Hargraves. Gets this one all the way across now. Ryan sends, trying to send his teammates there. It's Rosnicki who was not able to win his team a throw there, much to his surprise. It will be a throw here for Dartmouth and Andrew Ellis. Had a word with the official there, but Seymour just trying to argue his side, his case, as this one will get played across for Stonehill. Once again, controlling on the back line. Good possession so far for Stonehill. Haven't really gotten as quality a look as Dartmouth so far, but they've done a good job controlling possession here early in the first half. That one, an errant pass, but ran down there by Sean Ryan. And this one will get sent out of play for a Dartmouth throw. So not the type of play you wanted to make there. Maybe even a little bit of the announcer jinx as they immediately lose possession after I shouted out how well they've been doing in that area so far. Ellis will play this one in. And it's going to get tapped forward here. Miras trying to get there. Unable to do so as this one will get cleared out that time by Colin Hargraves. Sent back in and kept in play there by Arvarhar but he's gonna run out of space to work with as that will be a goal kick. So, Diaz Neto will send his team upfield here. Wearing the light blue today for Stonehill and Net. This one will get played out towards midfield. Once again, the target for almost all of their goal kicks has been Jacob Rosnicki. Going to get taken away here by Dartmouth. A great ball trying to find Magnuson. Plays that one. It's deflected. Now cleared away that time by Terrence O'Neill, was trying to find uh, Vahar in the 18, but that one was deflected away. So nearly another opportunity for Dartmouth. Instead, it'll be Stonehill with possession coming the other way, trying to set up the attack here. Terrific pressure. A great run there from Colin Milliken, but running out of space to work with, and Dartmouth is able to secure the takeaway. That pass from Magnuson deflected out. It will be a Dartmouth throw narrowly on Stonehill side of midfield as this will be dropped off here to be thrown in by Ellis. So Ellis going to back up a little bit here. As trying to get take advantage and get some extra space, unable to do so. Magnuson back to Ellis, played forward, gets by everybody, and that's going to roll into the 18. Diaz Neto will touch that down. We'll see if they'll apply pressure forcing to pick this one up. Doesn't look like it. Stonehill will control now. We're going to work it to the near side. Maza Bergeron plays this one forward. Bittencourt trying to show a little bit of the flashy move there, trying to tap it back with the back heel, but Fenton was there and able to block that out of play, so it will be another throw here for Stonehill as this one gets played in, headed away there by Uno. As that one gets deflected, trying to appeal the handball, and they will get it there against Jared Raposa. Definitely looked like it caught him on the arm, so Dartmouth the free kick here. So pretty, a pretty even 
first 10 or so minutes, all things considered, nearly 30 minutes left to play here in the first half. Dartmouth has a couple opportunities, two shots, one of which had to be saved by Diaz Neto. It's a good play back the other way. Once again, Stonehill trying to keep it, play this one safely back to that back line. Look to create from there. A lot of patience here from Stonehill. Seems content to play the possession game a little bit. Just prevent Dartmouth from being able to sustain an attack. Now this one will get sent downfield. First touch there was Zach Davis, but it's going to go right immediately the other way. Magnuson with the shoulder. Forward to Arvahar, and he'll play this one back to Magnuson. Magnuson trying to stop on a dime, but has it taken away. Good defense there for Stonehill. Looking to get upfield quickly. Rosnicki trying to dribble through a couple white jerseys, unable to do so as that steered away. Nice little move there from Cameron Brain. Another freshman that's cracked the start in 11 for Dartmouth this season. This one, too much on it inside the 18. Scooped up once again. And Stonehill will once again have the opportunity to play this one back out. Still no corners in today's contest. You can see the Dartmouth sideline getting a little loose here. Having their players jog around, stay loose. We'll await to see what the first substitutions of the game will be. Dartmouth trying to play this one forward. It's going to be Stonehill, though, and Lemma Bittencourt. He'll drop this one off for Maza Bergeron, who once again just elects to play it safe, work it to that back line, create from there. Pressure there creates a takeaway. Our Varhar, the initial pressure, it was Trenton Blake that came away with it. Now upfield with it, it's Christian Fed. Finds Magnuson. Magnuson looking to find a way to get this into the 18. Played in. A high touch there. Not sure how he reached that one. It was Vasilis Mirhas. The freshman, once again, I mentioned it a couple times. He's been good this year. A goal and assist so far. Averages just shy of 60 minutes a game for the Big Green. Was looking to direct that one on goal, but Dias Neto was in a good position for it as a takeaway here. Rosnicki, the no-look pass, and up the sideline comes Stonehill. Raposa trying to play this one back to Rosnicki. It's going to get deflected. It's loose. Played back and sent away there. Smart play there from Sebastian Mannion to find Christo Dulo, who was able to just play that one away. But immediately back on the attack is Lima Bittencourt. He'll send in a cross. That's deflected away. And Magnuson trying to quickly work upfield. Gets cut off there by Terrence O'Neill as another ball gets sent in. And now it's Sam Fenton who clears this one away. A little bit of a tie-up. Winning the battle there was Miras. And he'll play this one across. But once again, retreating back into the play was Colin Milliken. Was able to get in that passing lane and take away that pass. Raposa. Back to Milliken. And they'll look to work this one across. Maza Bergeron touches this one down, plays it forward, and will look to get it back here. And somehow, someway, he does it. Not sure if that was intentional, but was able to block that clear attempt and control possession here for the Skyhawks as they look to him set up an attack. Raposa surveys his options and now sends in a cross. Played away that time by Uno. This one steered away. Rosnicki trying to put some touch on that pass, but Magnuson is there for it, and he'll work this one upfield. Douglas Arvahar trying to apply the pressure. Might have gotten a piece of that one. Touchdown now just outside the 18 and sent away by Diaz Neto. Now Arvahar gets – that was a great bounce for Dartmouth, and that will allow the freshman forward to send this one in for an attack that sails just wide. Vasilis Miras off the feed there from Douglas Avarhar. The two freshman forwards connect, but the shot sails just ride. Let's take a look at the instant replay here. In a moment, we'll take a look. We're going to get our first substitutions of the game. It will be the freshman forwards who just linked up who sub out. They're going to check out now as now on the front line for the big green. It's going to be 
Ben Jenkins alongside Phineas Callahan, who will look to control the tempo up front for the Big Green. So just a reminder, our Varhar is out. Vasilis Miras is out as well, and it will be number 11 and number three on the front line for the Big Green, as Stonehill looks to work it the other way. Once again, Magnuson has been all over the field so far today. He'll take that one away, but immediate pressure there from Maposa nearly got the takeaway. Instead, it'll go the other way. Stonehill once again, first touch off of the clear. We're gonna play it upfield now. Sean Ryan, that one got deflected, and this one will go all the way back to Uno, who plays this one for to Magnuson, and Magnuson has numbers. Looking for an avenue to cross this one in. He'll look to slow it down now. Magnuson trying to spin away there from the pressure from Sean Ryan, and Ryan walks away with it. Magnuson's still down on the field. He's going to get up now a little slowly, but he seems okay. So no injury concerns there as now Magnuson sits back down again. So keep an eye on that. Stonehill will look to go the other way. That's a great ball. Leading the way there, it's Zach Davis. Davis's cross is deflected out for a corner. Magnuson is still down by the Dartmouth bench and he's gonna get up now and walk over. Will they wait the official, what, what's gonna happen here if he's gonna check out? It looks like he is gonna check out. Magnuson walking over the bench now. It will be a corner here for Stonehill. The substitution for Oscar Magnuson is going to be still getting ready to come in. Magnuson now down on the field by the Dartmouth sideline. It will be Sean Ryan to send in the cross from the corner once we get the substitution in. Checking into the game now for Big Green will be James Wilson, the sophomore forward from Toronto, Ontario. He'll check in in a moment. Magnuson still down, trainer looking at him so he can't resume play until that's cleared up. Got Stayed down, got up a little slow, tried to get back, decided to lay back down and he'll get subbed out here. Hope, have to hope he's okay, have to hope he can return for Magnuson, he started all four games this season, plays about 70 minutes a match. Hopefully he can come back in in the second half after he gets subbed out here. It will be once again James Wilson, the sophomore in his career, 19 games played, started half the game so far this season, plays just shy of 50 minutes a match. So Magnuson's up, he's going to the bench, into the game comes James Wilson. Once again, it will be Sean Ryan for Stonehill to send in the first corner kick of the game for either side. So it's a battling the goal. You can see it right there. Here's the cross from Ryan. Deflected, actually off a Dartmouth player back towards the net and now clear of the 18. Good pressure being applied there by Cameron Brain. That one will go out. And Dartmouth earns the throw. This one thrown in, trying to target Ben Jenkins. Or rather, that was Phineas Callahan who was the intended target. Regardless, it will get played all the way back down to DS Neto. Pressure being applied here from Ben Jenkins, number three. Neto will pick that one up and immediately roll this one back out to the opposite side. It's Carlin Hargraves now up the field for the Skyhawks. Hargraves tees up a pass that gets deflected away off of the back line. Touchdown in the midfield there by Zach Davis. Works this one back to the outside. Aggressive physical defense results in a takeaway here. It's Phineas Callahan. Callahan plays this one forward for James Wilson. Wilson, back to Callahan. And a cross for a shot and a save. Once again, it's Carlos Diaz Neto with the save that time coming up for the shot. It was Sebastian, or rather that was Christian Fed with the shot attempt that time, but was not able to get that one by Diaz Neto in net. So second save of the match so far for DS Neto. Actually, third save. The stats just updated on my screen. Third save of the game for Carlos DS Neto, who's off to a terrific start so far for Stonehill. He's kept this one even, but can his offense help him out and get their first shot on goal of the game? 
This one gets deflected back the opposite way. And that, whoa, what a hop on that one. Lima Bittencourt will play that one. <laughs> Look, that one bounced straight horizontally back towards the Stonehill side. This one, a great pass across. And Stonehill will side and set up the offense here on the far side. This one gets through. And is touched down there, Colin Milliken. Sends this one across. Lima Bittencourt inside the 18, working against Fenton. Bittencourt's pass is deflected towards goal and scooped up there by Costi Christodulo. I don't think that'll go down as a save. It was Sebastian Mannion who touched that one down back towards goal. But Christodulo was able to have the quick reaction and make the save. Like I said before, I don't think that's one that goes in the stat sheet. But a tremendous job regardless to keep that one out of the net. So a dangerous opportunity, nearly an own goal, which would have put Stonehill up. Instead, the Skyhawks will have to start over. Lima Bittencourt plays this one across. It's touched down there. Good move. And that one is going to get sent off of a Dartmouth defender and out of play for another corner here for Stonehill. Terrific work there by Jacob Rosnicki. So here comes the substitution into the game for the Skyhawks. Checking out is going to be Jared Raposa. Checking in for Stonehill. We'll get that number for you in a moment when we can see the back of his jersey. It's number 34, Martin Janssen. This one played in, deflected away, outside the 18 now, but Stonehill once again will look to control this one. They're gonna play this one back to Sean Ryan. Just took the corner, now sends this one in for a shot attempt that's deflected out for another corner. It was the freshly checked in Martin Janssen, who immediately tried to take a quick shot. Had it deflected away, but Janssen started the first two games of the season, hasn't seen the field since, but He's back today, getting the early nod here. The freshman from Norway might have an opportunity. This one sent back across and cleared there by Dartmouth. Back the other way off the boot of Ben Jenkins. Jenkins will return to his spot up at the front of the field here. As might have lost that one in the sun was Benjamin Maza Bergeron. Didn't make a play for the ball, had his hand cover in his eyes. I don't think he saw that one as this one. Great defense there from Christian Fed. But a terrific job there on the back line by Colin Hargraves to play that one back and forth to force Dartmouth to reset. Wilson keeps himself alive. Showing off a little bit of the physicality as he'll play this one up the sideline. Phineas Callahan touches this one down and it's played all the way to the back line. Callahan gets it back. Trying to work the one-two game with Andrew Ellis. Callahan will finally send in the pass as that one from Jenkins didn't have a lot of mustard on it. Couldn't get it to James Wilson. And now Lima Bittencourt will just play that one out for a big green throw. So a player down on a knee now for Stonehill. It's Colin Milliken who's on one knee by the Stonehill bench. Milliken back on his feet now was Went to one knee, was motioning to the official. We've got a cluster of Stonehill players around head coach Jim Reddish, who's currently talking to the official. This will be an opportunity for me to talk a little bit about Jim Reddish, a graduate of Stonehill College in 1996, played as a both a forward and a midfielder for the Skyhawks. Spent six years as an assistant coach before becoming the head coach. And he's worked for several universities, not in a coaching capacity, but a couple of jobs and internships, usually on the media side of the field. He'll finish his discussion with the official. It looks like Milliken's gonna stay in the game, so no issues there, as finally we will get play resumed here. And this one will be sent back. It's it's one of those sportsmanship things in, in soccer where Stonehill played it out of play because of the injured player. So Dartmouth returns the favor, sends it over the end line for 
a goal kick and play will resume now in full capacity as here's a takeaway. Trenton Blake, a shot that gets deflected. It's down in front. Follow up blocked by Diaz Neto. That's still inside the 18, still loose and now clear off the boot of Terrence O'Neill. But another huge save there for Carlos Diaz Neto. Blake created the initial opportunity. It was a terrific shot from close range and Neto able to block that one away. It certainly hasn't been a lack of chances for either side. Just haven't had one that's been able to defeat the goalkeeper so far. Stonehill will throw this one back into play. Going to be sent back away to the other side of the field by Dartmouth and now back to Dartmouth side. Kind of looking like a game of tennis the last couple kicks there as we get another whistle here as check-in. I'm not sure what the stoppage was. It's once again, it's Colin Milliken who's now going to the sideline with the trainer. He's gonna get subbed out of the game. Stonehill is going to check in now. Owen Burke will come into the game. The sophomore midfielder from Massachusetts will get the nod here as Milliken looks to get some water on the sideline and hopefully fix whatever the issue was. So drop ball, Fenton plays this one back across to Uno and Uno will get it back immediately. He'll tee up a pass into the midfield, touchdown by Phineas Callahan. Alexi Uno plays this one up the field. Good pass there to Blake. Blake plays this one forward, a great ball there for Cameron Brain. Unfortunately though, that follow up pass ends the build up as Stonehill clears it and looks to go the other way. Lima Bittencourt into the open field as he draws a lot of contact and will get his team a free kick there. To do the honors, it will be Benjamin Maza Bergeron. He's missed two games this season, but has started the three games he's appeared in, including the last one for the Skyhawks. This one gets over the intended target in elevating Martin Janssen. And Janssen will be deemed to have committed the foul there as it will be a Dartmouth free kick here. On the sideline talking to head coach Bo Oshani is number 30, David Masuk, who will probably look to check into the game here in a moment for the Big Green. As of right now, it's Costi Christodulo who sends this one downfield. First touch by Jenkins, trying to deflect that one forward to Blake. Blake controls now. Blake trying to work his way back inside. That's going to find the boot now of Wilson. James Wilson draws some contact, goes down hard. And indeed, the free kick will be awarded, I believe. It's hard to tell with the way the light is on the field, but I think that's outside the 18. But a tremendous opportunity here for the Big Green to set up a cross here, mere feet away from that 18-yard line. To do the honors, it will be Christian Fed, the junior midfielder from Norway. We'll look to send this one in for the Big Green. A lot of players inside the box for Dartmouth. Seven players. This one played in. First touch by Jenkins, and he, I think he got it with his hand. So it is gonna go the other way. Jenkins had the first touch, but it bounced up, hit him in the arm. And that will be a handball and a free kick awarded the other way to Stonehill. Nearly a golden opportunity. And instead, the Skyhawks once again survive. And that's been the story of this first half so far for the first 20 or so minutes. It's been Stonehill surviving. And they've even gained themselves a couple opportunities here. And all it's gonna take is one for the Skyhawks. We'll see if they can keep up this intensity though as Fenton applying the pressure will earn the throw here for the big green as now it is Masuk on the sideline who will look to check in for Dartmouth. So David Masuk will check into the game here for Cameron Brain, the freshman. Brain will take the long walk around the outside of the field as Masuk will Join his teammates in the midfield here for this upcoming attack. 
Bittencourt trying to work it by Fenton, and Fenton once again stellar, plays that one out. A quick toss back in here to Owen Burke, and Burke will slow this one back down. Stonehill works it up the field now. That gets deflected backwards for a throw here for Dartmouth off Sebastian Mannion, who fired that one off of Martin Janssen. So it will be Andrew Ellis once again to get us back underway here, Ellis. Started in all four games this year, has played nine, nearly 90 minutes in each appearance so far. Has played the full duration of the first half so far for the Big Green, and he will get another opportunity to throw this one in from much closer. He'll direct traffic. Trying to find a spot for his teammates here where he can put them in a position to potentially break this scoreless tie. Ellis sends in a terrific ball deflected high up in the air now. A bicycle kick attempt by Wilson. He whiffed, follow-up shot by Fed is deflected the opposite way. Now El a shot attempt that sails just wide there for Andrew Ellis. Playing well up from his right back position. He ripped that one. I'm not sure if Diaz Neto got a piece or if that one sailed by wide clean. Let's take a look at the replay. It was a close one. Neto seemed to be in good position for it. If it had been on target, we'll await the official rule, and it was indeed a missed shot attempt. Neto didn't get a piece, but terrific effort there by the goalie to try and stay in front of that one from Ellis. This one kind of will slow down near the midfield. Played forward off the head of Uno. Touchdown here by Callahan. Chips it forward to Blake. Blake touches down inside the 18. It's Trenton Blake. Spinning away. Blake, not really an avenue for a shot, so he'll look to reverse field here across to Ellis. Ellis touches this one down, and Ellis sends it across that gets deflected out for another corner for the Big Green. So headed over to the sideline now will be Christian Fed. Taking a look at the stats for Dartmouth, four shots on goal on eight attempts. For Stonehill. Two shots, neither one of which has had to have been saved by Christo Dulo. But on a side note, Christo Dulo did have to make a save, a, a somewhat a save, on a own goal attempt as that one sails over Diaz Neto, trying to get up to the ball and grab that one away. It got through, but no one there on the far post for Dartmouth to take advantage of the mistake. Will be another corner, though, and this time it will be Sam Fenton who sends this one back into play. Oh no, a throw I should say, apologies. A throw for Fenton, as now he'll send in the cross. Skies it a little bit, but Wilson should be there to keep this one alive for Dartmouth. Wilson setters down here, and plays this one back to Ellis, who sends in a cross. This one sails high in the air, deflected backwards, and Bittencourt will look to play this one away. Did not get a ton on that clear attempt, so Fenton will control. Dartmouth looking to continue to keep the pressure on here as now it's Callahan forward for Blake. Blake back to Callahan. Callahan gets caught up there. Terrific defense and the takeaway. First Stonehill by Benjamin Maza Bergeron. And now here come the Skyhawks. Might have a run here for Bittencourt. They'll find him. Tiago Lima Bittencourt sends in the cross. Deflected away by Mannion. Great work there was as he lost his balance while backpedaling. Still able to play that away. Follow-up shot. And there's the first official save of the game for Costi Christodulo. Read that perfectly and made that one look very routine. So Christodulo will drop this one out and look to play it back downfield. First touch by Jenkins, trying to play that one back towards Blake. Blake will continue to apply the pressure, but cleared again there by Sederquist. This one played back by Mannion the other way. Jenkins in a good spot for it, is able to touch that one down. Ben Jenkins controls. Terrific first touch, and now it's Blake. Blake will look to slow it down here. Trenton Blake trying to make the smart play here. They'll work it all the way back to Masuk, and now all the way back to Mannion. Fed sends it across. 
Uno finds Fenton playing up from that wing back position. Is able to play that one off of Bittencourt. They've been battling all day. And Fenton will play this one in quickly to Callahan. Fed trying to run into space. Callahan elects to maintain control himself. Now Blake thought about a shot on the fake shot. He actually lost possession. And now it's Lima Bittencourt playing this one forward. Wazniecki reverses field. And here comes Stonehill the other way. Martin Janssen the run. Janssen keeps it alive. Now sends in a cross that finds no one and that'll go out for a corner kick for Stonehill. Cross was deflected. We'll await to see which Skyhawk will take this one. It's the usual suspect, Sean Ryan, who will trot over, trot over to send this one back in. Dartmouth has a player up. Might try to get a quick substitution in here. It's Kate Kiesling talking to one of the assistant coaches here. He's not gonna check in right now, but keep, keep an eye on that. Here's Sean Ryan. The cross from Ryan gets played out that time by Ben Jenkins who read that one perfectly and it will be, I think this might be a throw in. It is a throw in here for Stonehill. So to do the honors here is Benjamin Maza Bergeron. We saw his power before. He's able to play this one into the 18 from there. Gonna take a big run and start here, nearly all the way back to the bleachers. This one will get played back in. Played away off the head of Fenton. Bergeron sends in another opportunity, and this time Chris Todulo has seen enough. He'll take that one away for the big green. Blake trying to make a run. Can that one find him? Blake, a terrific read on that one. Here comes Trenton Blake. That pass, though, not quite enough on it. That allows Terrence O'Neill to take it away. It was a terrific open and move there from Trenton Blake off a perfect pass from Chris Todulo. But unfortunately, the follow-up pass didn't have enough on it. Resnicki sends this one across. Touchdown in front. Cluster of bodies. Fed had it and now cleared by Ellis upfield. Here comes James Wilson who draws a significant amount of contact there and will get the foul call as this will be the first booking of the day for either team. A yellow card awarded there to Stonehill. And I believe the perpetrator was Sean Ryan, was trying to get back into the play, had to grab Wilson to prevent him from getting by. Clear cut yellow and that'll be the first yellow card of this one. Sean Ryan, the offender. So Sebastian Mannion will send this one back into play from where the infraction occurred. This one takes a hop and will be collected there in goal by Carlos Diaz Neto. So Diaz Neto. Once again, we'll take his time here, trying to fire this one out again. You can see the ball die in midair. For Stonehill, only have about seven more minutes to worry about the win factor as once they switch sides, it will be in their favor, pushing towards the other side of the field. It was, once again, Sean Ryan who picked up the yellow card. For Ryan, that'll go down as his first of the season. Only the fifth yellow card of the season, I should add, for Stonehill. But just a classic case of, you see that sometimes in, in um, American football where, you know, when a corner gets beat, he just has to wrap up and accept the penalty. And that was definitely the case there. Wilson had him dead to rights, would have created a brilliant counterattack for Dartmouth. So just wrapped him up and a well-deserved yellow, but one that I'm sure 10 times out of 10, he would make the same exact play. This one gets deflected out off of Wozniki. As we get two more substitutions here for the Big Green, checking into the game, it is going to be Will Loco alongside number 18, or 19 rather, Cade Kiesling. So Kiesling, we saw on the sideline, joining him to on the field will be the freshman, Will Loco. Loco from New York City, New York, captain of the Manhattan Soccer Club. This will be his third appearance of the season for the Big Green, looking to become a quality sub here in the final five or so minutes and potentially create the first goal of the game. 
Nasuk trying to play that one back. Dangerous ball. Lima Bittencourt almost got there. That touch a bit too much. And here's the opportunity for Stonehill. They got a three on two. Lima Bittencourt touches this one down. Tees up a shot that gets through, but the save is made by Kosti Christodulo. Got deflected in front by his defender. Was able to read the deflection and make the save. So the terrific opportunity there for Stonehill. Had that three on two breakaway. Lima Bittencourt able to get it by the first defender, but once again, it's Chris Todulo making the play. Here's Ben Jenkins now. <laughs> Fighting, working hard. As that'll go out, it will be a throw here for the big green. Quickly played into Phineas Callahan. Callahan, back up top. Kiesling will work this one to the back line. Play this one. Uno plays this one all the way in, and it'll be scooped up there by DS Neto. Four and a half minutes to play here in this first half. Quality opportunities for either squad, but so far it's been the Costi Cristodulo and Carlos Diaz Neto show here at Burnham Field. Diaz Neto sends this one out to midfield. First touch there by Wilson out of play for a Stonehill throw. On that sideline, right next to the throw-in is Bo Oshani. Spent 10 years as a pro soccer player in the US for the Columbus Crew and the Kansas City Wizards, who have since been rebranded to Sporting KC. Won a championship with them in 2000, and this will be his, this is his second team. He's coached up at the Division I level as head coach. East Tennessee State was his first. Here's pressure being applied here by Will Loka, and takes out Lima Bancourt, no whistle. Lot, let them play here today so far. Terrence O'Neill chases this one down, trying to work against Lilka. We'll get it to the back line and they'll play the one two game here. Looks like one of those drills you see them do pregame. Three defenders and pennies and four players trying to play keep away. Here's Mannion to Ellis, wearing that captain armband. Has taken an awkward fall there. Seems to be, oh no, he's. Staying down on the field, it's David Masuk, and he hurt himself on that one. Got caught up trying to play that one, and I think he might have rolled an ankle. They're going to take a look at him. It was a tough situation as he seems okay. He's going to be up here trying to walk this one off. He went down immediately grabbing that right ankle, but he's back up. Looks good to go, which is terrific to see. Just kind of got caught up on there, caught his foot on top of the ball and fell down a little awkwardly, but he'll continue. Fed plays this one up into the 18. Deflected by uh, Rasnecki, who was able to sky up in the air and get be the first player to that one. Final two and a half to play here for Stonehill. Looks like we might get a very late substitution here for the Skyhawks. I see a player on the sideline taking off his white warm-up shirt. So we'll see if he will get a nod today. Gonna get a flag here for a foul against Colin Hargraves, who's still down, looking to get up a bit of sportsmanship there. All right, Ben Jenkins trying to help him up. Seems to be okay, once again. So far, so good. And every time we've seen a player go down, they've been able to get up pretty quickly and, and shake it off. Colin Hargraves, the Hopping up quickly that time, and it will be DS Neto to send this one back into play. For under two minutes to play in this one. This one gets by the initial intended players. As here's Jenkins playing forward, working against Hargraves again. Jenkins runs out of space. It's going to be another throw in for Stonehill here. Sean Ryan will look to get this one back into play. Have to wonder here, so far downfield, the Skyhawks will elect to play aggressively here or just look to maybe time waste a little bit. This one's gonna get deflected upfield, touched down there by Mesuk. And now four to James Wilson. Wilson tries to send in the cross, but it's very tough to play that one back upfield when your momentum is carrying you that hard towards the end line. And he doesn't see send it over the goal and out of play for a goal kick here. As we enter the final minute or so of play in this one, there's a look at James Wilson. He's played well today so far. He's seen a lot of his speed. has been able to create some opportunities, but so far, just stellar goalkeeping play from both sides have kept this one even. 
and that will likely be the score we go to halftime with unless Stonehill can build up an attack here in the final 30 seconds of half number one. Touchdown by Stonehill, played forward, a great ball. Skyhawks trying to set up the attack here. It's Owen Burke playing this one forward. Wasnicki into the middle, deflected out, and a cluster there of three Dartmouth players who all kind of stopped and looked at each other. Finally, Ellis came out of the pack with it and will clear that one away. Stonehill, under 10 seconds to get a final opportunity here. This one gets deflected out, and one final play sent back in and scooped up easily there by Chris Todulo. And that'll do it for half number one here at Burnham Field on the campus of Dartmouth College. We saw a couple shots, we saw a couple opportunities, but so far stellar goalkeeping play by both Carlos Diaz Neto and Costi Chris Tadulo has kept us tied, a scoreless tie. We're gonna take a short break, but we'll be back shortly to talk about the highlights, the halftime stats, and go over a little bit of the upcoming schedules for each of these two sides. Thank you for joining us. We'll be right back here on ESPN+. Plus. Life needs great teammates. Be there for yours. With retirement, benefits, and life insurance products, Symmetra is your teammate for whatever lies ahead. Upgrade, ready, upgrade, ready. One, one. Patrick saying T-Mobile lets you upgrade as often as every year. Take charge with the freedom to upgrade every year with Go 5G Next at T-Mobile. Also, he's hungry. Go to Greco Chevrolet in Lauder Hill during the Power of Savings event. Save $10,000 off Chevy Silverado trucks or save $7,000 off Traverses, Equinoxes, and Trailblazers at Greco Chevrolet in Lauder Hill. I used to wait to run my dishwasher till it was super full. Now, I dish differently. I run it daily. Weekdays. Weekends. Sometimes after a big snack. You might think that's wasteful, but it's not. Because even half loads use 80% less water than hand washing, saving up to $130 a year on utilities. And with Cascade Platinum Plus, you just scrape, load, duck. So next time you're waiting to run it, just run it. Dare to dish differently. This is not just a shot. This is wellness made easy for those who've got plans. Get your flu shot and other vaccines in one trip. Schedule online today. Book a work trip, earn one key cash, shake some hands. Do not forget to laugh. Book a getaway from work trip. Use one key cash, order some sides. Do not disturb. Join one key to earn and use rewards across Expedia, Hotels.com, and Verbo. When the war started, they took better care of me than humans would have. Joshua, take care of her. I promise to keep us safe. What do they call you? What's your name? My name is Alfie. You're my friend? I'm like a bodyguard. Our mission is to find the weapon designated Alpha O. They're coming to get me. I'm getting you out of this. Oh. The Creator. Rated PG-13. Only Peter September 29th. Prepare for tomorrow by contacting us today. We are back here at Burnham Field on the campus of Dartmouth College. Still a scoreless tie in this one after 45 minutes of action. Going to take the opportunity here to take a look at some halftime stats and highlights. There's been a couple quality opportunities for each side in today's game. Here was an early shot from Trenton Blake that sailed just high of net. Dartmouth had a lot of the early opportunities. Trenton Blake, another play there, trying to direct that one towards goal. And here's a cross in, probably the closest we've seen to a goal today. A great pass inside to Mirasp, who sends it just wide. Lima Bittencourt plays this one middle, nearly an own goal, but a terrific play there by Chris Todulo to keep that one alive. A takeaway here for Blake. Sends this one across for a point-blank shot by Jenkins that once again, Diaz Neto able to get to. Here was the last opportunity here for Stonehill, a shot attempt saved by Chris Todulo. It was deflected off the defender, but was able to read it, react, and make the save. Taking a look at the halftime stats for each of these two teams, 
Obviously, no goals so far. Dartmouth has more shots on goal, but the possession has actually been controlled by Stonehill today, 54% to 46%. They've also earned more corners. Stonehill, with those six fouls, did pick up a yellow card against Sean Ryan, so we'll have to keep an eye on how he plays in the second half and if he can keep up that same level of aggression with that yellow card hanging over his head. Take a look now at upcoming schedules for both of these two teams for Stonehill. They've got a couple close contests. They get an opportunity at Lemoyne. It was would have been an any 10 matchup a couple years ago. Now a Northeast Conference matchup. They're going to get into play, and they have a couple terrific games on their schedule. Bouts against Boston College, including a former Ivy League opponent in Brown. Going to be fun to watch. You can catch all those games on the ACC Next Network and ESPN+. Plus. For Dartmouth, going to get... Uh, one more tune-up game against Merrimack before they have to jump right into conference play as they take on Princeton on the road to open their Ivy League opponents. Got two home games, though, against Penn and Bryant to close out the month. Once again, all these matchups, including two big games against Vermont and Cornell, all of them are going to be right here on ESPN+. Plus. And if you want to come out to a game and you're looking for a unique place to stay that is close to campus, check out the Norwich Inn. Since 1797, the inn has been known for vintage charm while providing the modern conveniences expected by today's traveler. And their 22-room addition is a fitting complement to their historic main inn. Enjoy informal dining and handcrafted ales brewed on site at their Jasper Murdoch's Ale House restaurant. The Norwich Inn is conveniently located on Main Street in Norwich, Vermont, just one and a half miles from Dartmouth College, and they have plenty of free parking. For more information, you can check them out at Norwich Inn. Com. We'll be back again in a couple moments. We're going to have a fun feature video to watch today, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Life needs great teammates. Be there for yours. With retirement, benefits, and life insurance products, Symmetra is your teammate for whatever lies ahead. What I'm about to tell you is going to be hard to believe. <laughs> I've been pulled through time between the past and the present and the future. Everything is turning to sh That's right. And around, around, and around we go. All right. Again. Loki Season 2, streaming October 6th, only on Disney+. Plus. All flights have been grounded. I had to stormed. escape. The city was sticky and cruel. I drove all night. The distance is nothing when home means everything. Streaming football on Xfinity. It's fitsational. I should trademark that. And this season, Xfinity Internet and TV customers can get up to $200 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube. You know that feeling of having to rewash dishes that didn't get cleaned? I don't. Cascade Platinum Plus has me doing dishes differently. Scrub, soak, nope. I just scrape, load, and I'm done. Only Platinum Plus is bigger with double the Dawn grease fighting power and double the scrubbing power for a no rewash clean and a cabinet ready shine. Rewash? Not in my house. Upgrade to Cascade Platinum Plus. Dare to dish differently. Don't worry. It happens to the best of us. It does? It happens to surgeons, judges. Overruled. Airport Grand Crew, game show contestants. Bermuda Triangle. Megan Trainer. Bowlers. It even happened to your little cousin, Timmy. That doesn't even make sense. That doesn't matter. Thanks, Grandpa. Eat pretzels. Eat more pretzels. Watch movies. Watch more movies. Get airline miles. Get one key cash. Book in app to earn one key cash on top of your airline miles. Tomorrow by contacting us today. We're back at Burnham Field. On July 31st, 2023, the Ivy League partnered with the Patriot League to host their second mental health summit. The day-long program welcomed over 150 attendees, including student athletes and professional staff from all 18 institutions. Join us now as we check out the feature from that event. 
I think the shared commitment we all have is that we're here to decrease the stigma around mental health. We want to make it a more open conversation, whether it's talking about student athlete mental health, coaches mental health. We got one goal, we just gotta work together to complete that. I think the, the evolution of the conversation about mental health has become prominent year after year for the last decade, if not more. But I think we're finally at the tipping point where the conversation isn't just about how are we reactive to prevent worst case scenarios, but how are we managing everyday stressors and activities? I have really loved today. I mean, just the conversations. I love talking about mental health, and so being able to dive deeper. I think the keynote was incredible, seeing what mental health and athletics looks like really at the highest level. Mental health is the same thing as physical health, right? We all have it. You guys are all in the sports space. You wake up in the morning and you do a physical check. It might actually inform how you work out that day, how you approach your training. What would happen if we took the same approach to mental health? This is my first mental health summit that I've been able to attend and just recognizing the value of sharing those best practices. We all have very unique institutions and so, you know, I think it's very valuable to sit here and think, hey, that's really cool, you know, jot that down. How can I adapt that for our institution? And it's also a really incredible moment to be able to just have a lot of school pride, a lot of league pride. I've always thought mental health is very important. The stress and anxiety that student athletes have to go through to play their sport, to compete in their sport, like there's so much going on outside of that. And I think this Mental Health Summit is like a really good step forward to decrease that stigma and to continue to give access and to continue to give thoughts I think mental health is something where, because we don't talk about it as often, I think coaches might not fully understand the grasp of what that feels like to an athlete. If your team is not open about talking about mental health, you have to open the doors and you have to be like, guys, like, we're all in this together. Dartmouth College has taken holistic student-athlete development incredibly seriously. I was one of few athletic administrators with a sports psychology background. And then since my role has evolved in the last five years, I've been able to continue to support a team, a team that is collectively building to enhance mental wellness, well-being, and performance of all of our student athletes. How do we make sure we're cultivating an environment? And this is where everyone in the room has an impact on the environment that occurs within your campus. And all of us need to be actively cultivating it. I want the idea of mental health being stigmatized to be something so of the past that we can't even imagine not having this open conversation. These Bulldogs are the top dogs. Life needs great teammates. Be there for yours. With retirement, benefits, and life insurance products, Symmetra is your teammate for whatever lies ahead. Are you on your way? Yep, coming. And mom and dad? Don't worry, they'll be there. <laughs> Happy anniversary. <laughs> Go beyond the expected with the number one most dependable mass market brand three years in a row by J.D. Power. Kia, movement that inspires. At Charmin, we're all about the signs of softness. So we doubly tested our Charmin Ultra Soft to prove its value really stacks up. First up, the cushy soft test. Wow, softer than ever. Next, the absorbency test. See, it's two times more absorbent, so you can use less. So, Charmin Ultrasoft is always worth it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have one more test to conduct. We all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? Streaming football on Xfinity. It's fitsational. I should trademark that. And this season, Xfinity Internet and TV customers can get up to $200 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube. Have you seen these Priceline deals? Where are we going? I'm going wherever the extreme winds take me. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Here's some advice. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. But if you discover a drink with great taste and none of the sugar, well, that's probably Smirnoff Ice Zero Sugar. 
It sounds too good to be true, but it is true. I've seen it. My advice, choose smell of ice. If you thought the Florida heat was insane, wait until you see our prices. Hot deals for Hot Wheels are being served now through Labor Day at Vista Volkswagen. Try the new 2023 Taos or a new 2023 Tiguan with 1.9% APR financing available. Plus, every new Volkswagen model comes with three years of complimentary maintenance. Don't wait for these Labor Day savings to cool off. Get your hot deal today at Vista Volkswagen. Discover your Vista. We are back at Burnham Field here on the campus of Dartmouth College. The Big Green currently in a scoreless tie with the Stonehill Skyhawks. In today's contest, it will be close to second half kickoff. But let's take a look here at the Ivy League preseason poll for men's soccer. Currently, Penn sits at the top of the poll. Cornell, number 25 in the national rankings, currently sits at number two. Harvard in the third spot, but did get a first place vote. Then it's Yale, Princeton, there's Dartmouth. Brown, a bit of a drop off, and then Columbia at the bottom. Yale, the reigning champions, not picked by anyone, any coach so far this season to finish in that top spot, but going to have a chance to work for the magic number. Going to be top four. That's what gets you in that end season tournament. So that's the goal for Dartmouth here today. Going to finish this game once again. This is a non conference tune up for Dartmouth. They got another one against Merrimack before heading to Princeton to open Ivy League play. They've been good the last couple seasons. Finished with a record of six, seven, and three last year. Three, four, three, and four in conference play. They're going to look to continue to improve, continue to get better. And so far, we've seen a lot of connections. It was a freshman connection up front by Vasilis Miras and Douglas Arvahar that nearly resulted in the opening goal of the game. But the shot sailed just right, and Stonehill nearly was able to answer. Had a couple opportunities off a shot from Lima Bittencourt, a tough cross that almost first an own goal, but instead. We are still even here in this one. So Stonehill got their players on the field. They're still getting loose, getting ready to go. Stonehill's going to be attacking the right side of the field on your screen today, which is, or rather, they're going to be switched. So Stonehill has been working against the wind all day. You can see it on that flag in the background, just how much the wind is blowing. It's been against that left side goal all game. Now Dartmouth will get a chance to attack that goal and potentially you know, make it a little bit easier to set up attacks and work the ball downfield. Taking a look at some other statistics. Goalie Carlos Diaz Neto has four saves on the game. On the opposite side, Costi Cristodulo has two. A yellow card was awarded to Sean Ryan, number 10 of Stonehill. He played all 45 minutes. We'll see if he's out to start the second half. Taking a look, he does look to be on the field, so we'll have to see how he plays with that yellow card. Two shots on goal for Stonehill by Zach Davis and Tiago Lima Bittencourt. For Dartmouth, their four shots on goal have come from four different players in Ben Jenkins, Andrew Ellis, Christian Feed, or Fed, rather, and Vasilis Muras. Once again, the Dartmouth bench is vacated. They're, they're not there. Um, Stonehill's ready to go. The buzzer sounded, but we don't have the home team. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that and, and see what the, what the um, situation is. Stonehill seems ready to go, still getting loose. Trying to keep an eye as finally we do see a Dartmouth player take the field. It's going to be Costi Christodulo who will get over to that net and, and try and get himself set up here. Head coach Bo Oshani also walking across the field back towards the team bench. Like I mentioned before, has been a terrific coach for this squad. A Division I head coach record of 59 wins, 57 losses, 27 draws as his squad will take the field now. So, Bo Shawnee talking to the coach here. Like I said before, buzzer sounded. Stonehill was on the field pretty ready to go. Dartmouth a little late coming back from the halftime break. So, Shawnee speaking there with Christian Fed and talking to Ben Jenkins as well. 
interested to see what combination of players they'll use. We saw a lot of different substitutions for Dartmouth. James Wilson came in as a sub, put up some good minutes, as did Phineas Callahan and Ben Jenkins. So interesting to see which uh, if those three players might sneak into the starting squad lineup to start the second half or when they will sub in for Stonehill. Only two substitutions in Owen Bark and Martin Johnson, or Johnson, I should say. Interesting to see if they're going to keep that limited amount of players or if they're going to look to uh, bring more players in off the bench, add some more fresh legs here in the second half. So Stonehill had the first touch of the game. It will be Dartmouth who controls now for the open in touch here of the second half. It looks like it is going to be Vasilis Muras who will take the open in touch here for the Big Green. Trenton Blake, another player to keep an eye on, and James Wilson, who was terrific in the first half, will be back in. This time he'll start the second half, came in as a sub, now in the start in 11 to start. Half number two as we are underway here at Burnham Field. 45 minutes separate us from the results of this one. We've seen opportunities for both squads. Have to imagine that one of them is going to be able to break that score this tie here in half number two. It's Sam Fenton on the far sideline to toss this one back into play for the Big Green. A terrific toss here. Going to get deflected down. Phineas Callahan had that first touch. And now Callahan back to Fenton for trying to get it to, Ms. to Miras. As this one will go out, it's going to be a throw here. Raznicki plays this one forward, trying to target his teammate inside the 18, shielded away from it by Alexi Uno. Here's a pass that deflects off the head there of Phineas Callahan. Double team here. I'm a bit in court trying to work by Fenton. It's been a battle between those two all game, and that'll go out for another throw here for Stonehill. It's going to be Benjamin Maza Bergeron to get us back underway here as the sun starting to set over those mountains on the far side of the field here as we enter the latter moments of the day and of this game. Bergeron showing off the strength. Deflected away there off the head of Sebastian Mannion. Sent back in for a follow-up. Gets over the head of the intended target on the far post, which was Martin Janssen. And that'll get cleared out into the stands here as no one was able to make the catch on that one. This one gets deflected back and Stonehill looking to play this one into the 18, cleared away there by Uno and now played forward here by Trenton Blake. Ends up losing control here. It's Sean Ryan working with that yellow card as this one gets sent the opposite way. Touchdown by Miras. Sends this one across, that pass deflected but right back to the boot of Christian Fed. Fed surveys his options, plays this one safely back to Mannion, gets by one, and now plays this one all the way back once again to Alexi Ono. Up the field now come the big green. It's James Wilson with the touch. Back to Miras, trying to work away from two Stonehill players. Put that one through the wickets for a nutmeg. Kept it alive. Ellis playing up now. They like to have their two... Left and right backs play a ring back role where they can come up during the attack. Ellis had one of the four shots on goal for Dartmouth in the first half. This one deflected by Blake, and Blake just so much speed on him, has a really high motor. Able to get to that one and keep possession in favor of the Big Green as they look to slowly work this defense and see if they can find an opening here to set up an attack. That one did not have a ton on it. Deflected back and forth and now finally cleared the opposite way. Chris Todulo waves off Uno, and now we'll feed him the ball. Alexi Uno sends this one back to Chris Todulo. This one played forward. And that will be a foul there against Stonehill, a hold called against Benjamin Maza Bergeron. So it will be Sebastian Mannion with the th free kick here. Both these two squads still looking for their first chance here of the second half. Nice looking ball, Phineas Callahan able to play that down with the soft touch. 
And now trying to work it towards the 18 to set up a cross, but a nice slide tackle there from Benjamin Maza Bergeron takes that away. So it will be for Fenton. Plays this one in quickly. Miras with the run, but in the reverse direction. And now Ellis plays this one back forward for James Wilson. Wilson lets it go through, looks to work it up here and set up a cross. Played into the middle, deflected there in front. Terrific work there from defender Colin Hargraves. As back the other way come the Skyhawks, up the field with it. It's Colin Milliken, Milliken forward, Raznicki across. And now looking to work it all the way to the far side of the field. It's Lima Bittencourt once again working against Fenton. Bittencourt shot attempt is wide for a goal kick. Oh no, a corner. I didn't, I didn't see that one get deflected from my vantage point, but it was off a Dartmouth player, so that will be a corner kick here. Doing the honors this time for the Skyhawks will be Colin Milliken. Milliken got subbed out about halfway through the first half. Back in the game here to start the second half, trying to shield away that sun as we get a whistle here. And once again, we've seen some jostling inside the box. It's going, it's Zach Davis gets right up next to goalie Christo Dulo, and he's jockeying for a position there. Here's the cross from Milliken. Deflected out. Blake able to play that one off of Milliken. That's going to settle right down, though, for Ryan, who sends in the cross, deflected away by Fed, but right back to the Stonehill side. Played forward now for Stonehill. Weaving his way through. That one is going to get deflected, but still reached the intended target, with Nikki, And now back outside to Lima Bittencourt. Bittencourt trying to get by, take some contact, and that's a penalty. Earned that time, it was Tiago Lima Bittencourt was working one-on-one -on -one against Sam Fenton and was able to draw the foul, a penalty kick here for Stonehill and an opportunity to break the scoring in this one open. Who will get the nod here to do this one for Stonehill? They are one-on-one -on, -one on penalty kick so far this year. And it will be Zach Colin Milliken who gets the nod here for the Skyhawks, Milliken scored their earlier penalty kick for his one of his three goals so far this season. And he'll look to score the go-ahead goal here for the Skyhawks in what is clearly the best chance either team has received so far in this game. In net, once again, it's Costi Christodulo has made a couple big-time saves, three in total. Going to have to have one more here against Milliken. Milliken shot. Off the post and in for Stonehill. A rocket from Colin Milliken, and I don't think there's any goalie at all that could have saved that one. Skyhawks will celebrate on this near sideline. That's the fourth goal of the season for Colin Milliken. Plays it hard off the left post. And we might have a shocker here. A reminder, the last time these two teams played last season, Dartmouth won six to nothing, but it's Stonehill who strikes first here in the rematch, the second time these two teams have ever faced. Ball back in play for Dartmouth. Now with a renewed sense of urgency here. That one deflected away, it will be a throw here for James Wilson, he'll drop that one off for Andrew Ellis. Ellis plays this one in. Alexi Uno sends in the cross. Going to get a whistle here as too physical that time on the play was Vasilis Miras. And that will be a foul against him. No card. But we'll have a talk with the official here as he walks back upfield. Once again, it was Tiago Lima Bittencourt who earned the penalty and set up that sequence for Stonehill. He's been terrific so far. That's Stonehill with control now for the first time after the goal. Played back the other way. High up in the air, there's Lima Bittencourt working against Fenton again. This one will be steered across but deflected away by Stonehill. Played forward there by Janssen. Deflected back the other way, and we get a whistle for a free kick. So this one will be sent in quickly. 
into the 18, Fenton Skies trying to set up a bicycle kick that time, unable to do so. Now it's Lima Bittencourt again. Drops this one off for a shot that's deflected towards the middle of the 18 and cleared away by Fed. It was Vaznicki who tried to set up a penalty kick there, but had no space to do so. Not a penalty kick, rather. Bicycle kick, I should say. That gets deflected away. And unable to keep that one in play was Alexi Ono. Uno, I should say. Sean Ryan to play this one back into the field for Stonehill. First touch by Raznicki. This one's going to get cleared all the way out for another throw for Stonehill here. A shocker here in Dartmouth as Stonehill, only their second year up at the Division I level, have taken the early lead away from one of the oldest programs in men's soccer. This one controlled. Muras trying to play that one forward but deflected away by Milliken. Milliken will look to get it back. Nice play there by Ellis. Drops low, able to poke that one away. As in the midfield with it now is Cameron Brain. Now forward, it's Phineas Callahan. A terrific ball gets through for Trenton Blake. And Blake will look to set up the attack. Blake stops on a dime, still working, and now across. It's James Wilson. Wilson to the far post for Callahan. Back middle, but snagged out of the air by Carlos Diaz Neto, who makes his first major contribution of the second half after a terrific first half for the senior keeper. So once again, gives that team a little wave, says, hey, get up field. We got the wind at our backs now. This is our opportunity to be aggressive. So you can really see his power here as this one will sail all the way to midfield. Callahan will control for the moment, gets it to Wilson. Callahan took a tumble, but no whistle as Wilson loses control and it will be a free kick for Dartmouth where Callahan went down. Was originally going to be a play on and indeed it will be over there as not really an avenue for Dartmouth to take advantage of that after the foul. So Mannion will play this one short now to Brain who plays this one across into the 18 is Blake trying to work against Colin Hargraves. That'll go out. It will be a throw here for Dartmouth. Fenton to do the honors. Only a second appearance of the season today. Fires this one in. Deflected inside the 18 and now clear for Stonehill. Touchdown. And back the other way come the Skyhawks. Here's a pass, a great one, but the follow-up wasn't quite there. Raznecki had a head of steam, but the pass from Zach Davis kind of died on contact. Boy, would have been a very dangerous sequence. Instead, it's Sam Fenton once again trying to atone for that penalty kick. He was the offending player on the foul. Back the other way. Here's a shot that's blocked in front. Wilson controls, drops it off. Sends it across over the head of Callahan, and now Lima Bittencourt will play this one the other way. Fenton touches this one down. Bittencourt back into the play. Sends it the other way once again. Phineas Callahan. Good pass there to Cameron Brain, who plays this one forward. Once again, trying to target Miras. Able to get a piece of that clear attempt on the far side by... Maza Bergeron, but that will be a throw here for Stonehill. Some players getting loose for the Skyhawks right now on the sideline. Don't have a number for you yet, but we will be keeping a close eye on all those substitutions. Played back in. Fenton the touch, but right back to Stonehill. Controlled there by Davis, who tries to play this one for Raznicki. This one's going to get played all the way back and fired back into, or out of play rather, for a corner kick. So a little bit of a miscommunication or perhaps just a misplacement on that pass back to Christo Dulo. It's gonna be quickly played in from the corner here. And taken away by Sam Fenton. And Fenton ahead of steam up the sideline. That's gonna be deflected away by the two purple jerseys in the area. 
It was Maza Bergeron alongside Jacob Raznicki. Fenton will get the throw though. Uno. Upfield taking advantage of all this green grass ahead of him. Finds Ellis. Ellis. Cross was deflected out of play off of Sean Ryan. So another corner here for the big green. Desperately looking for that equalizer. You can see they've taken their level of play up a notch after that goal by Milliken off the penalty kick. So to do the honors, it will be Christian Fed to send this one in as we have our first substitution ready to go on the sideline of the, of the second half. It's Jackson Kowai for Stonehill trying to get loose and trying to get ready. We'll keep an eye for when he checks in us. Here's a shot that's played away. It was Andrew Ellis, but played away by the defender on the near side. Here's a follow-up and a save. A rocket from Christian Fed, but saved once again by Carlos Diaz Neto. And Diaz Neto is slow to get up, and this would be a huge blow for Stonehill if he can't continue. Sitting up right now, trying to shake that one off. Christian Fed, a golden opportunity, a rocket of his shot, but Neto was there for it. The opening shot was by Andrew Ellis. It was a header off the corner that was played out by a Sean Ryan on the near side of the corner kick. So a defensive save, an actual save, and that score still sits at zero for Dartmouth. They're gonna get another corner here, this time from the far side of the field. Going to be Phineas Callahan. Callahan sends in the cross as we get a whistle. So we'll do it again. So Phineas Callahan will tee this one up once again. Had an opportunity there to kind of test out his first kick. Follow up attempt off the head of Fenton and Ride as down again. In net is Carlos Diaz Neto, who took a little bit of a fall there. Seems to be okay, though. Going to be another corner here. Third consecutive corner for the Big Green. Once again, on this side of the field, it's been Christian Fed, who will look to send this one in. A good cross, punched away, still loose, and played. It was initially touched there by Diaz Neto, but it was Martin Janssen who was able to secure the clear for Stonehill. Dartmouth trying to play it back into the 18. That one headed away there by Hargraves. Fenton still inside the 18. Now Ellis, a shot, and it's Andrew Ellis, the equalizer. A brilliant shot there from Andrew Ellis, the junior midfielder. Let's take another look. Touches it down there in precision shot there. Finds the corner of the net. Two shots on goal prior to that one, but finally gets the goal that he was looking for. And we are tied one to one here at Burnham Field. Goal was scored once more. It was Andrew Ellis, your Cabot sharpshooter of the game. Hurry and grab your bag of cheesy popcorn today and let your taste buds embark on a flavor packed journey. Get ready to pop, crunch, and savor because you deserve nothing but the cheesiest and the best. Brought to you by the Farmer Companies. So it was a penalty kick from Colin Milliken that opened the score in here in the second half, but it's Andrew Ellis who has the answer for the big green. Ellis will get the throw here, wearing that captain's armband, really showing off that experience so far today. Here's a cross from Wilson, a header, and another goal for Dartmouth! A perfect cross from James Wilson! Finds Vasilis Miras. And indeed, the Dartmouth Big Green are cooking today. What a finish, what a cross, and look, a look at this celebration. Two goals within moments of each other, and now it's Dartmouth in the driver's seat, two to one. And this crowd is loving it. 
That'll go down in the books as the second goal of this season for the freshman, Vasilis Miras from Athens, Greece. He's been a big addition this year for the Big Green. And shout out to the other, the other player, sophomore James Wilson picks up his second assist of the season, second of his career. So Stonehill have to shake this one off. A moment ago they were celebrating and now they find themselves trailing. This one played forward and Lima Bittencourt keeps it alive but it's gonna be played away there by Callahan, the opposite way. This one deflected for by Blake. Back the other way, Fed will come up to play that one and a brilliant slide tackle there by Jackson Kowai who just checked into the game to clear that away and end that sequence. So Stonehill looking for the answer here. It's a tie up and here comes the Skyhawks. A shot, a save, follow up. No, it's cleared away. What a play by Costi Christodulo. Once again, making the play for Dartmouth and now it's the big green the other way. Blake, cross is deflected. Blake gets it back, sends in the follow up. That's once again deflected away for a corner kick. Let's take a look at that save by Costi Cristodulo. Apologies. Weren't able to get that up in time before this corner kick here for the big green. It's going to be Phineas Callahan from the far post. Try, probably will look to play this short to Blake here. We'll await what happens here. So it will be sent in by Callahan. Punched away there by Diaz Neto. Now fed control safely back to Mannion. Into the middle of the field now and back across to fed. Sun setting over the background, the backdrop of this Burnham Field game today in a game that has rapidly become offensive heavy. Goals by Colin Milliken for Stonehill, a penalty kick to open the scoring, but then it was Andrew Ellis and Vasilis Miras in quick succession, succession that have given Dartmouth this two to one lead. This one played for Lima Bittencourt trying to get there. It's played out that time by Mannion for a corner and now down on the field is Tiago Lima Bittencourt. Going to get set up now. Definitely look like a cramp trying to work his way out of it. He's going to get up here and seem to be good to go. We're going to get another substitution here. Checking out of the game is going to be Martin Janssen replacing him on that front line. Is going to be Trying to get that number for you guys. It's number 18, which will be Shane Fonseca. So Fonseca into the game, replacing Janssen. As here is the corner kick. Played into the box. Would have been dangerous on the far post, but nobody home. Fenton will let that one roll out for a goal kick. So substitution here back into the game is going to be Douglas Arvahar. The six foot four forward from Norway will check back in replacing the most recent goal scorer Vasilis Miras. He'll get some high fives on the sideline after a terrific shift here to start the second half. This one gets played high up into the sky to the opposite side of the field. 
Touchdown here for Dartmouth. Controlled now by Stonehill, but pressure being applied results in a takeaway and oh, a whistle. A free kick awarded to the Skyhawks, much to the dismay of the Dartmouth players up front there. It was Trenton Blake who came away with the clean swipe, but there was a foul on the play. This one sent across, Ellis gets to it first. Touchdown by Stonehill, but the follow-up play there from Avahar able to take that away. This one, a nice looking through ball. It gets all the way through to Blake. Blake plays this one into the 18. Sets up a pass that Wilson couldn't quite get to. Nearly the third goal of the game off the feed from Trenton Blake, but James Wilson just a step late. That one got the crowd. You could hear the gasp from the crowd on this one as Wilson would have been in position. Callahan on the far side didn't really have an avenue to shoot that one and wasn't able to control it off the first touch to keep the possession alive. This one tapped down. Arvahar plays this one forward. Blake, a shot and a save there. Once again, it's Carlos Diaz Neto. Tough angle for a shot there by Blake. Still able to put it in a way that it troubled the keeper and that earns Dartmouth another corner as trying to stretch out here. Some sportsmanship here. Sebastian Mannion is stretching out opposing forward Jacob Raznicki who went down with a cramp. So there's the sportsmanship there and love to see that. Hopefully Raznicki can shake that one off as he will look to jog over here to talk with the trainer. He's been key for them today. It will be a corner for Dartmouth as Raznicki heads to the sideline here. Replacing him coming into the game is going to be Owen Burke. So that's a big loss for Stonehill offensively. One of the most experienced forwards we'll have to check out here. So Christian Fed will do the honors. He's done the majority of the corner kicks today as most of them have been on this near side. Sends this one in. Oh, another dangerous ball. Touchdown here for a shot. That's saved. Follow up is in. The goal that time, it's Sam Fenton. First goal of the season for the sophomore defender, second of his career. The Spider-Man Sully to the home fans here. Jumping up into the crowd. you love to see it. Let's look at the replay. Terrific first shot and a terrific save, but Fenton gets through the pack and finishes the goal and shoots some webs out at this hometown crowd. Take a look at the celebration right here. A terrific job on the goal. Couldn't quite see the celebration. I promise you he did it right at the end as he jumped into the crowd. It's three unanswered goals for the Big Green. Colin Milliken will get this one back underway as Stonehill shell-shocked. Just about 15 minutes ago, they were celebrating the first goal of the game and now they find themselves trailing and Dartmouth does not seem to be done. It's the substitution, Douglas Arvarhar started the game, subbed out about halfway through the first half, now subs back on and you can see that was fresh legs making an impact. He has been all over the field so far. Another substitution looking to check into the game here for Stonehill. Two more substitutions for Stonehill here looking to check in. It will be, it will be Ekram Hazic, the senior defender checking in. And I believe that's the first appearance of this season so far. He'll check in. They're going to be replacing Terrence O'Neill. Can't quite see. Oh, it was also Lima Bittencourt who checked out. He was replaced by number two, Jared Raposa. So Raposa into the game alongside Ekram Hazic, and those are the two subs for Stonehill. Fenton has been so aggressive the last couple of minutes here. Gonna earn his team a throw there. So 
final 20 or so minutes to play in this one, 22 to be exact. This one sent in, but right to the boot of Chris Sederkurst, Seder, Sed or Christ, who plays that one out for a Dartmouth throw here. For Fenton, this was his 18th career game, his 16th career start, and his second career goal now in this one. Fenton will get this one back, trying to play this one back over the top towards Callahan, but too much on the pass or another goal kick here. It will be Dartmouth here looking for the substitution. I believe that's Ben Jenkins. Likely will be looking to sub on up front and he will be replacing Trenton Blake who should get a loud applause here because he has had a terrific game today. Going to get a hand from the crowd here for Trenton Blake. All over the field so far, the freshman Ford has played almost the entire game. He'll finally get his chance to rest back into the game. Is going to be Ben Jenkins, and that's a lot of height on the front line for Dartmouth right now. So the six foot three Jenkins joins the six foot four Douglas Arvahar. So a lot of big bodied Fords that you can target on those crosses if you're James Wilson or Phineas Callahan. We'll wait to see what impact that will have as it's a goal kick here for Carlos Diaz Neto. Oh, there was a yellow card awarded. I must have missed that. A yellow card, it was against the coach. So a yellow card awarded to the sideline here. That's the second card of the game. The first was to Stonehill. That one will get applied to the coach and staff. So Sam Fenton to toss this one in. Fenton. Pump fakes and now sends in the cross, uh, the throw rather here. So once again, Fenton will do the honors here. This one deflected back the other way for Stonehill, back by Fenton, now loose. Touchdown there, back the other way. This one sent four, no one home. Off the head there of Uno. This one sent in, deflected away there. Good work there by Ellis. Stonehill trying to set up a late attack here, a late push. Here's Ryan, sends in the cross. All the way through and Fenton will clear that one away. Wilson keeps that one in play. And that one's going to be stopped right there by Douglas Avarhar. Forward to Wilson. Wilson trying to get this one all the way up to Ben Jenkins. Will draw enough contact there to pick up the free kick. And another yellow card there. This time entering the book, it's going to be Owen Burke. So Owen Burke picks up the yellow card. That'll be his second of the season for Stonehill there. It was so far Burke and Sean Ryan have picked up yellow cards for the Skyhawks. This one played into the 18. Now Jenkins looking for a touch and he'll control. Jenkins working against a couple purple Kits there, it's gonna be cleared away and now played upfield there by Kawai. That's deflected back towards goal and a shot and a score! Ben Jenkins deflects that pass and it goes straight to the boot of Douglas Arvarhar who secures the goal, his third in the last three games. And he'll run right over to those students in that student section, high fives for everyone. What a goal, what a finish, and he's been close to one for a lot of the game tonight. Finally able to get his goal there. 
as, oh no, the officials might overrule this one. They're talking right now. Stonehill's trying to drop this one down like it's a goal kick. Are they going to take this one away? No goal. Offsides is the ruling, so take that one off the board. Oh my, I was... While the Dartmouth Big Green were celebrating, it was the near side official who had the flag up. He conferred with the main official on the field and during that stoppage, Stonehill got the good news. No goal, offsides the call. Still three to one your score and wipe that goal off the board there for Douglas Arverhar. No assist either for Ben Jenkins. So Kosti Christodulo will send this one back into the night as you could argue some of the wind might be out of the sails, but they're still nursing this three to one lead here. This one's deflected out. Fenton plays that out. And this will be sweeped upfield by Jonathan Preston, who just checked into the game, the junior midfielder making his first appearance of the season. Touchdown in the midfield and controlled there by Colin Hargraves and forward to Owen Burke. Burke sends this one across to Colin Milliken. That one's going to get taken away, though. Deflected back away, and here's Milliken. Some space to work with. Milliken keeps this one in play. And he's going to play that one off a Dartmouth player for a corner. Let's take a look. Yeah, let's take a look at once again at that, that previous non-goal. It was ruled initially looked like a goal it, and then was overturned. Here it is in slow motion. Jenkins clearly on side, but was Arvarhar off? That's the question, and he was ruled off sides on the play. So it was certainly close. You could see why off sides was the ruling. Obviously, Arvarhar clearly thought he was on because the celebration started immediately for the freshman, but the flag was up. That was about as close as you could have asked for as far as an offsides goes. So, three to one. Stonehill will get the throw here on the near side. It's going to be Maza Bergeron as this one gets played into the 18, deflected out. Got over the top of Ryan and back the other way comes Jonathan Preston. That one's going to be taken away and played back in by Kawhi. It was Jackson Kawhi, the freshman defender from Honolulu, Hawaii. Play that one back in, and it will result though in a Fenton throw here, right near his own bench. This one is steered back in. Fenton looks to send this one back into play. Deflected forward off the head of Preston. Touchdown there by Arvahar, who you can tell Arvahar he's definitely going to be gunning for a goal here. Wants uh, to get back the one that was so close to being his first of the game as here's Wilson. Wilson stops, pivots, and looks to slow this one back down. Andrew Ellis sends in a pass. Arvarhar applying the pressure. Stonehill looking to clear here. Preston trying to gut back, and here's a pass that's right to the boot played up by Colby Meyer. Now he'll tap this one back to Fonseca. Fonseca sends this one across the field. Preston nearly was able to get to that one, but narrowly got by him as Ryan looks to make a run. Sent back towards Fonseca as he trips himself up. And back the other way come the big green. This one played all the way forward to Douglas Avahar, and he trips up himself on the ball. Now back to Wilson. Wilson plays this one forward. James Wilson, the sophomore midfielder from Canada. Plays this one to the end line. Wilson sends in the cross, deflected away out in front that time by Hargraves. And Stonehill survives. And now I look to work it the other way. Jenkins trying to get back here and contest this run from Colin Milliken. Little give and go back to Milliken. As he'll play into the open midfield and look to reverse field to the opposite side. Here's Ryan. 
deflected by Preston. Steered away, and it, Stonehill's just going to wait to. They'll have to play this one off a drop here as down on the field with Sean Ryan. He'll get up now, trying to gesture to the official. Look, look, this is where the contact occurred, begging for a call, and I don't think, obviously you're not going to get it there, but you can see he's pleading his case with the official as to why that should have been a foul on the play. Now head coach Bo Orshani talking to the official. We have kind of, it's like a little debate here. It's, it's, it's Sean Ryan on one side, Bo Orshani on the other side, representing their respective teams, trying to plead their cases like it's a courtroom out there almost. Finally, we'll resume play though. The verdict was undecided. Stonehill works this one upfield, deflected away there off the boot of Fenton. Another substitution at the scorer's table, looking to check in for Stonehill. And there's a Dartmouth player up as well who might look to check in. As here's a through ball to Wilson. James Wilson touches it down. But no, the pass wasn't quite where it needed to be for Ben Jenkins. It was Christian Feed with the initial pass to set that up, or Fed rather. And now Ellis will play it back to Fed, who will send it to the back line. Fenton plays it forward. That will get deflected away right to the sideline and head coach James Reddish, or Jim Reddish, I should say. As we get our substitutions checking out of the game, it's going to be Colby Meyer. He'll be replaced up front by number nine, Raznecki, who left with cramps earlier in the game. He's back in now. As it, the freshman forward will check out, Douglas Alvarhar nearly had his first goal, was Ruled in offsides, but not before the celebration had already commenced for Dartmouth. This will get deflected to the sideline. Checking back into the game for the Big Green is the other freshman, Vasilis Miras. He'll check in freshman for freshman swap there. Fenton. Fenton plays this one in. Deflected away, Stonehill for the moment controls as played out of play there by Preston. Preston will apply the pressure here as this one finally sent downfield. Uno plays that one out of play for another throw here for Stonehill. Final 13 minutes to play here in the second half. Three unanswered goals by Dartmouth after the open and penalty K goal by Stonehill. Played up aggressively, trying to fi find some room to work with inside the 18. Taking a tumble was Sean Shane Fonseca. He'll come back in and get control of the ball. Fonseca. Once again, trying to draw a foul and we'll get the call there. There was a little bit of contact. I'm not sure if there was enough contact for that level of reaction. But we're going to get a free kick here. That was definitely, there was contact. You could argue it was a foul, but the, there was definitely also a little bit of embellishment there from Fonseca trying to make sure he got that call. And he did, it did, it did do the job. So two players set up here for Stonehill. Sean Ryan's one of them, and it will be Ryan who sends this one in. Header, but the opposite way, and Preston gets a solid piece of that as the other way comes. Dartmouth, it's a, might have been a two on one, but Wilson overran the ball. He'll control now once again. Here's James Wilson, weaving his way through, getting absolutely grabbed and hauled down, and finally will get the whistle there. As indeed, here is another card. This one will be against Colin Milliken, the third Stonehill player to receive a yellow card tonight. It was Sean Ryan who picked up the first one. Now Milliken, the latest recipient of a yellow. The other being Owen Burke, the third member of the Skyhawks who's received one tonight. So three players now on the field with a yellow. 
as we get a whistle and trying to play that one forward quickly to Vasilis Miras, but going to have to do this one again. The official was still <laughs> writing down the yellow card but while that one was sent in, and he said, hey, man, you got to wait a second. So Christian Fed will play this one in once more. We'll see if he'll target the same player. This one popped up towards the goal. It's still loose. Finally cleared away. Jonathan Preston hustling over to go get that one as we get a ruling. It was, might have been an offside, and I think that was the ruling. So an offside wouldn't have mattered anyway. It'll be a free kick here for Carlos Diaz Neto. Played forward. Here comes Stonehill behind the defense. Shot attempt is blocked in front by Alexi Uno. And that will be sent out. A terrific defensive play to make sure that Costi Cristodulo didn't even have to move out of his own net. Here's a shot that gets blocked once again in front by Ellis. Milliken back up top and across. Trying to set up this attack. Another shot that sails high and away back behind the netting for a, another goal kick here. Another substitution into the game. Preston will take a seat. He's been replaced here by Phineas Callahan, who will get the nod here to close this one out in the final 10 minutes. Still a 3-1 to one lead in favor of the Big Green. Three unanswered goals. Scoring was started by Andrew Ellis, who picked up the first goal for the Big Green. Follow-up was scored by Sam Fenton with Vasilas Miras. And Vasilas Miras actually picked up the second goal. Fenton picked up the third insurance goal. Here's James Wilson now. Wilson pivots away. Takes a lot of contact as he'll send this one in. Back in with the header. Follow-up shot is deflected. Another follow-up shot is sent into the trees. And some fan may walk out later next to their car in the parking lot and pick up that one. It was a, that probably was a very gorgeous. I wasn't looking down at the shot on the live stream. But that probably was a very gorgeous shot of the ball just slowly sailing through the night sky. I like to imagine. Goal kick here for Diaz Neto. He'll send this one to midfield. Wilson got the first touch of it, and it goes right to Callahan, who plays this one forward. Now just outside the 18. A chip for Jenkins, and an offside. This time I kept a close eye on the official. Offside's the ruling. As Wilson getting up a little slow, trying to stretch out here. Whenever you reach this part of the game, when you have a player like Wilson who's played a significant amount of minutes, you're going to start to see that become an issue worth watching. He seems to be good to go, though. So another substitution here for Stonehill on the sideline. Another one for Dartmouth as well. Two for Dartmouth, in fact. We'll get those names to you when they have the opportunity to check in here. This one gets played all the way to the far side of the field. It's going to be Milliken who controls. Milliken sends it across. Deflected away by Mannion. And that one will go all the way out for a corner kick. And here come the substitutions for Stonehill. It's going to be Terrence O'Neill checking back into the game. For Dartmouth, it will be Douglas Arvahar alongside, I believe that's Will Luka. He'll replace Ben Jenkins. James Wilson will check out as well. For Stonehill, it's going to be Owen Burke who checks out of the game. Here's the cross, deflected away, bicycle kick, that sails just wide. It was the senior forward, Jacob Rosnicki. That's the second time we've seen him try to unleash that bicycle kick today. That one, he got solid contact, but sent it just wide. Once again, here's Jacob Rosnicki, and got a lot of contact, just couldn't quite locate it. And that's the hard part about those bicycle kicks, is it's pretty much a guessing game of where it's gonna go unless you're 
Ibrahimovic, in which case you can do it from pretty much wherever and it goes in. Going to be a goal kick here for Kosti Chris Tadulo, and he'll send this one out to midfield. This one's deflected, and Stonehill looking to continue the attack. Trying to play this one forward, <laughs> fighting for it is going to be Sh Shane Fonseca, now inside the 18. Whereas Nikki, surrounded by white jerseys, will find will look to clear this one out. Here's a cross inside, touchdown inside the 18, deflected forward for a shot and a save! What an acrobatic save by Kosti Krista Dula! Or Dulo. Let's take another look at that replay. So Krista Dulo. Floats in the air and makes a brilliant play on that shot attempt. This one sent back in, punched away. And Dartmouth will control. Back the other way, down the field, it's going to be Vasilas Muras trying to get there. Stonehill able to get there first. This one's deflected away, Stonehill. And Milliken will control back into the midfield for Terrence O'Neill. He'll look to send this one across, but Fenton is there for it. This one passed across. This one sent in on a rocket, deflected. It might have hit Riznicki. Not sure if that was a teammate v teammate friendly foul or if it did catch Mannion as that's gonna be a pretty crystal clear foul call there against Benjamin Maza Bergeron. Not quite enough there to draw a card. We saw a similar play with Sean Ryan get called earlier where he yanked down Wilson, but I think that one didn't quite reach the level of a card. Although the official will come over and have a ward with him. So going to be a free kick here for Sam Fenton. Fenton sends this one downfield. This one will be deflected and sent back the other way. Plopped up once again by Fenton, but it's loose. And there's Sean Ryan, who will be the first player to it. Uh, it's going to go out. Will be a throw for Stonehill, though. Play back in towards O'Neill. O'Neill back to... Ryan wearing that captain's armband and he just nailed his own teammate with that one. Ryan's able to maintain possession though from the off the pressure from Douglas Arvahar and this one will go all the way back to the back line of Stonehill. Touchdown sent across that time by Kawhi. And now played forward up the sideline with it is going to be Fonseca. Fonseca trying to figure out a way to get by all these Dartmouth players and nothing doing that time it was Phineas Callahan with the defense and takeaway back the other way played forward a terrific work there it's once again it's the two freshman forwards linking up Arvarhar trying to work through it's deflected in front still loose as we get a whistle and a free kick awarded to the Skyhawks they'll look to play this one quickly and oh no they're not gonna referee's not gonna let them play that one quickly as that one was whistled dead so they will have to go back to do the free kick. Nearly another opportunity. Vasilas Miras with the terrific touch was able to find Douglas Arvahar, but was unable to finish the buildup with a goal as Stonehill will look to go the opposite way. Final three minutes and change here to play this one as this one's sent across. Touch there by Ellis, back the other way. Pressure being applied, Stonehill able to survive there and send this one back in. Fenton applying the pressure, working against Raznicki. Raznicki a shot, save. Deflection to the far side is a terrific work there by Andrew Ellis, was able to shield away Colin Milliken, who was looking for the follow-up, and now it's Dartmouth with control. Terrific first touch, keeps this one in possession of Miras, and he draws the foul for a free kick. Time called. And it will be another booking. This time it's going to be the senior defender, Ekram Hazic, who picks up the card. Committed the violation there, the foul against Miras, who can't talk enough about how terrific a first touch that was as 
trying to stretch out their teammate there. It's Manion and Ellis. So Stonehill will set up the defense here. It's gonna be a set piece. Tallest player on the field right now is Douglas Arverhar, standing six foot four from Norway. Freshman Ford thought he had a goal, got called for a late offsides and had the goal taken away. I'm sure he'd love to be able to finish one here and, and get that goal after all. Trainer will come out on the field now to take a look at the player that was down on the field and look to stretch him out. I, So they'll talk it over. Um, standing next to the ball for the free kick will be Christian Fed, who's done the majority of the work today, but Phineas Callahan has done the corner kicks on the far side of the field today. So either one of these two players could be responsible for getting this one back into play as being helped up off the field now. It's going to be the freshman Alexi Uno, who went down, was experiencing a bit of cramping. He'll head to the bench now for the final 223 of this one checking into the game for him on that far sideline, I believe is going to be Cameron Brain. I think it's 21, hard to see from this distance. Substitution comes in. Actually, that's number 30, David Mesuk, who will check into the game for the Alexi Uno. So it was Phineas Callahan standing next to Christian Fed, but Callahan has since rotated over to the middle of the field. So Fed will be the one to send this one back into play off the free kick here. A couple of big bodies in the box, like I said before. Avarhar matched up one-on-one -on -one against Ekram Hazic, who just picked up the yellow card. Fed sends this one in off the free kick. First touched immediately in front by Stonehill as they look to go back the other way. It was Milliken playing that one forward. Mannion, the first touch on the back line for Dartmouth. Trying to keep it alive, but taken away. Fed, the good work again. And now it's Andrew Ellis up front. Ellis, a lot of experience, knows that. This would be a good opportunity to waste some clock. Oh, a miscommunication on the pass there results in a takeaway. And it's Stonehill the other way once again. Down the sideline with it, that will be Martin Janssen. Janssen drops it off. Four shot, that sails well wide for Raznicki. who clearly has left earlier because of a cramp issue and seemed like he got a little tied up on that shot attempt, came up a little awkwardly after the shot sailed wide. Final 90 seconds to play. He's going to look to gut this one out in the closing moments here. So once again, Colin Milliken scored the first goal of the game for Stonehill, but it was a goal by Andrew Ellis that tied the game back up, followed up by less than a minute later, Vasirlis Miras scored the second goal of the game before Sam Fenton scored the third insurance goal for the Big Green. Stonehill, final minute to play. Ellis sends this one the other way. And it's a perfect ball for Douglas Avarhar who touches this one down. Has to work against a couple purple jerseys here. Avarhar will look to work it to the corner and waste some more time as he takes a hard fall there. So he'll draw the foul there. Some wards being exchanged here as doesn't look like anyone's going to enter the book today. We've seen a couple yellow cards today against Stonehill, but I don't think we'll get another one here as it looks like it will be I'm trying to figure out who on the sideline is going to play this one back in. I think that's going to be Andrew Ellis is coming up. And Ellis will just touch this one to the corner and look to waste off the final 10 seconds of the game. Ellis has it taken away, deflected. Now it's Callahan. Callahan inside the 18. Callahan still going, deflected in front. Do they want one last shot? They do. It's going to sail high and wide, but that'll do it as Dartmouth secures the home win, undefeated at home to start the 2023 season as, oh no, a bit of tension boiling, boiling over there at the end of the game, but... A terrific one for Dartmouth. It was Andrew Ellis who tied the game back up, followed up almost immediately by Vasilis Miras, who scored the second goal, and Sam Fenton contributed with the last goal as it seems tensions have calmed down. Each of the sides exchanging high fives, handshakes, and pleasantries. It was a pretty close game, pretty back and forth. We saw Dartmouth 14 shots, forcing six saves in net. 
for Stonehill. They were able to get 10 shots, five of which were on net, or rather six of which were on net with the, the uh, goal scoring coming on that penalty, penalty kick from Colin Milliken. We'd like to thank everyone that's helped make this game production possible today. We'd like to thank our producer, Jen Chick Ruth, our technical director, Andy Hamill. We'd like to thank our replay operator, Mike Cahill, and our camera operators, Devin Atkinson, Justin Rice, and Brendan Week for coming out here today, surviving the wind and the cold out here at Burnham Field in Hanover, New Hampshire, and helping you, you all witness this excellent game. And thank you all for joining us so, for Brandon Bojarski, I was the play-by-play -play for today's contest, saying so long from Burnham Field on the campus of Dartmouth College, where the final score is Dartmouth 3, Stonehill 1. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Life needs great teammates. Be there for yours. With retirement, benefits, and life insurance products, Symmetra is your teammate for whatever lies ahead. And the kick is no good! Their epic losing streak continues. A kick in the teeth would hurt less. <laughs> but they probably miss that too. Let's show them that someone here knows how to kick it. With Fireball. Looking for a smarter way to mop? Introducing the new Swiffer Power Mop. An all-in-one cleaning tool that gives you a mop and bucket clean in half the time. Our new cleaning pad has hundreds of scrubbing strips that absorb and lock dirt away. And it has a 360 degree swivel head that goes places a regular mop just can't. So you can clean your home faster than ever. So mop harder, mop smarter with the new Swiffer Power Mop. Chevrolet in Lauder Hill. Inventory and discounts are back. During the Power of Savings event, shop over 400 Chevys with loads more on the way. Save $10,000 off Chevy Silverado trucks, ten dollars off, or save $7,000 off Traverses, Equinoxes, and Trailblazers. Your choice, seven dollars off. Feel the power of savings at Greco Chevrolet in Lauder Hill. We'll exceed your expectations. We, we guarantee, guarantee it. it. With college football on ESPN Plus, you get the best teams and the biggest conferences and so much college football action from across the country. So sign up now at ESPNPlus.com.
Thank you.